One of the things I'm thinking about today is to do with viewpoints. I've spoken about viewpoints quite a few times and I keep going back to it because certainly um, uh, one of the ideas that informs a lot of my thinking is this idea that we are uh, deeply viewpointed human beings or deeply viewpointed beings full stop and that a lot of the structure of our understanding is it draws on the idea that we feel ourselves to be located at a particular point in space and that our senses, particularly our uh, visual sense, uh, organizes the world around us according to the relationships established by that point in space. So things like proximity and distance, relative size, uh, depth perception, clarity, horizons, all those kind of um, uh, faculties or features of the uh, physical landscape are dependent upon the fact that we are viewpointed beings within that landscape. And what I've also said a couple of times is to do with how that uh, viewpointedness and the various features of that landscape carry over as, uh, uh, as elements or entailments within schemas to do with knowledge, to do with experience, that kind of thing. Um, and what I've just been thinking about is to do with, you know, to what extent do we occupy one particular point in space? I, mean, I, th I certainly do think that that viewpointedness is a key factor of our kind of phenomenal consciousness, or uh, yeah, I guess yeah, I guess that's the right way of putting it, and and as a key aspect of the organisational metaphors from which. Uh, which, which organises the things, again drawn from that kind of uh, viewpointed phenomenal consciousness. But I don't think that we are only experience ourselves as being located in space. I mean, certainly it's dominant. I'm standing in the middle of this, on this canal tour path, looking around, and that's uh, the dominant experience that I'm having is of being that kind of located being with all of those other features. But I'm sure that's not the only thing. And I think there's a number of sources of evidence which um, array themselves around that and which suggest that in cognitive terms our sense of uh, being, our viewpointedness is not only located in space but is perhaps distributed in different ways. Uh, and the first source of evidence is one I've spoken about before which is Polanyi's uh, Focal and Subsidiary Consciousness which I'll just make very brief reference to here. He's just pointing out that the fact that when we look around we have depth perception. You know, when I look out at this tree on the other side of the canal here, I can very clearly see that it's in front of the farm buildings beyond. And I can see it's beyond the, uh, the dying bits of bulrushes that are on this side of the canal. I can tell what's in front of one another, what's closer to me and what's further away by depth perception. And that depth perception is a result of the fact that I have two eyes separated by about three inches of skin and bone. Um, and what Polanyi is talking about, he, he talks about it in terms of um, awareness, really, the fact that we're not aware of the individual inputs to our eyes, we're only aware of depth perception. And I think in terms of what I'm talking about here, the significance of that is that at that very basic level, our phenomenal consciousness, our phenomenal no, that's phenomenal consciousness. The phen our phenomenal, uh, oh God. the information that we're getting from which our phenomenal consciousness is derived is not singular, certainly in visual terms. There are two lines of sight which are converging in the visual centers of my brain, presumably. Uh, the two convergent points separated by about three inches. Uh, and my phenomenal consciousness is made up of the combinations of, and differences between those two uh, convergent lines of sight. So it's the fact that my, eye, my eyes are actually in two points in space that I'm seeing the world as it is. So, and I don't have to work at that. There's no cognitive effort involved. It's, it's absolutely part of my experience. And, and, and that's what I refer to as depth perception. Uh, but it requires, but depth perception is evidence that there are 
that I'm not singularly located in visual terms at the very least, but I am located in two places, with the difference between those places providing information. Okay, the second uh, source of evidence that phenomenal consciousness is not only singularly located uh, comes from, I'm not exactly sure I'm a source here, but I think it was David Bohm who wrote something about it. And uh, he was talking about what it is to, to look at the top of a coffee cup. Basically saying, you know, how do we know that the top of a coffee cup is round? Because you never see the top of a coffee cup as round, usually. Um, if you ever did, you're either standing above it or you've got coffee in your lap. You see a series of ellipses. And as you raise your hand, the ellipse may uh, widen. And as you lower the coffee cup back to the table, the ellipse will narrow again. 